Okay. Dave the Bodger here. It's a pretty sunny morning in the garden and um, I've charged my phone. Here's the spoon I finished yesterday after the battery ran out. And here's a blank I carved with the axe. Uh, if you see part two of the videos and that is um, from the other half of that piece of wood I cleft yesterday so it's sycamore again and I'm going to carve this one now uh, through to completion I want to put my glasses on <coughs> oh there's the wood lovely right So quite a lot of carving is about looking <laughs> before you cut. And I've got to work the back of the bowl here uh, and the edges, so I'm going to go pretty much the same sequence as yesterday. So, a bit of thumb pull, which I can only really do if the wood here is relatively um, thin. So sometimes if it's a tougher bit of wood I might have to take a bit off the back first, uh, but I can just about get through the sycamore start to shape that <clears throat> okay so quite a long bowl this one but that's all right i'll probably pull the neck in a bit in a minute okay so before i carve the back there i'm actually going to even up the, the top of the rim um, because that defines then helps me define the thickness when i'm taking material off the back and helps uh so nice clean rim is quite important when you come around to hollowing. Um, and you'll see later, I probably do tweak the rim again later on. So that was um, reinforced pull stroke. A little bit of pivot coming around there. And we're trying to get this curve here nice and smooth through there. A little bit of lump there. Okay, we'll work this side now. Um, <coughs> which is a bit of an awkward one. So this is a spoon from straight wood. So the grain, this is the low point here, so I have to carve that way on that section and that way on that section. So I can thumb push down this piece. So I can just check those shoulders are similar, which they are. A bit of a lump there. I'll take that down. We're not quite even through here. Okay, so this cut, by moving the piece of wood, moving the spoon itself past the knife, I'm not having to move the knife too aggressively in towards my holding hand. So you'll notice we have this thing about when you're carving, it's a the supporting hand's doing quite a lot of work. Right, now I'm gonna work the back of the spoon. So I've established, it's not quite there, but this top edge here, all around there, is nice and clean now. It's a bit of a lump on that end, but I'll sort that in a minute. So the back <coughs> is the old good spot for the chest lever. This is just initial shaping and thicknessing. And like I said yesterday, that one of the really, really common things on your first few spoons, first few dozen spoons that you make, is you make the bowl really quite deep. And most spoons, um, particularly towards the front of the bowl, are really shallow, no more than a few millimeters. And if it's a big serving spoon, it can be deeper. It's really only ladles or old school soup spoons that need a lot of depth. And soup spoons uh, for eating broth or old days watery cowl, they were um, essentially ladles. So we're starting to get the, the, the uh, 
curve on the back. Bring that down a little bit more there. And here, just a tiny bit. And that's getting so thin now, I'm probably gonna give up using the chest lever on it and do more thumb push. But I've left big old facets on the back there. They're actually quite pretty. I quite like them. Right. Sorry. Sorry, I keep wiping those back of my hand. It's a very bad habit. I should stop, especially on videos. So I'm going to clear up the, the shoulder and start to work back on the handle here now. So this cut, like I explained yesterday, I'm working round here. So I'm not exposing a lot of blade over to this finger. It's the tip of the blade and it's a pivot. And this way, similarly, it's pivoting round there and it's not going to hit my finger. I think yesterday's video I did a different way of getting at that. So you want to remove a bit of bulk, again, a lot of beginner spoons, you tend to end up with a lot of bulk here because those cuts I'm doing are quite awkward. And that then can be an area that dries more slowly um, and is slightly problematic. And you might get cracks in the shoulders of the spoon. If you can get your spoon to a reasonably even thickness, I mean, it is always going to be a bit thicker here than there, it is much more likely to dry um, nice and even. Right, so that's not terrible. I, um, a little bit of thumb push, push and pivot. You see again, the, the workpiece is, is turning in my holding hand, along with the pivot of the knife in my knife hand. So look, I'm about three mil on the edges. And the depth in the middle is probably, uh, was it's more than that because the back curves, but it's certainly less than a centimetre. Uh, might only be five, that's a bit more than that, seven mil, say. Uh, you can convert it to imperial at your leisure. So it's going to bring these shoulders in a little bit. Um, and just look at that bowl shape, it looks okay. I think I explained yesterday that I'm kind of not big into drawing stuff. Um, if I was doing a set, I'd draw. Right, so this is <coughs> coming in down grain again. Got to use a pull stroke. Push that off a little bit. Close enough for now. So when I carved, I left everything slightly over width, giving me some options. I mean, when I did the axe work, it's over width. Ah, it's going to work. Look at the top handle. I like to look down the handle angle. I don't like handles that go too high. The handle should be running down into the depth of the bowl. Um, on, well, most spoons, they work better that way. That's going to clear the top of the handle a little bit. And at the moment the top here is quite flat, but we'll put some big facets on later. So just establishing ergonomics and angles, really, at this point. <coughs> okay. And that'll probably do. And when I evened up those edges, I didn't worry about the middle because I'm going to poke that out with the spoon knife anyway. Uh, it's going to take a little bit off the back. Again, this is a, a variant on the chest lever where you essentially pull the workpiece past the knife and your knife hand is just controlling angles on things. You see, I get a nice little curve on the back of the spoon there. I don't know, it's too high up. Back of the handle, handle at the moment's a bit thicker towards the end. I quite like that. <coughs> and then, um, I'll tweak that later. There's even enough on this one for a finial, but um, 
I don't know if I can be bothered doing that in the video. Okay. So, just clean it up a tiny bit. Bring it up through there. That'll do for the moment. So now, I'm at the point I kind of got to yesterday when the battery ran out. And I'm going to hollow. And this being relatively soft wood, I'm going to do it all with a single hook. This is a Nick Westerman blade. Um, it's actually a very similar profile to the Robin Wood compound curve, which would work equally well. Um, I say that because Sir Robin's stuff is actually available from Wood Tools, wood-tools.co.uk. Um, Nick's stuff takes a long time to get hold of because uh, he just can't keep up and he likes making other stuff as well. You have to go on the waiting list for Nick Westerman and it takes a long time. So I'm working across grain, stayed in a little bit from the edges, if you can see. And it's deeper at the back here. And when you're carving like this, um, with a tangential cleft, you're carving down through. And so we split the wood in half, now we're carving down through the growth rings. You might just be able to see little rings in the bowl, or the um, contrast on the camera may have messed that up for you. So again, I'm twisting the spoon quite a lot as I do this present the workpiece to the, the knife as well as working the knife through the wood and all these things these movements come more and more with practice there I'm actually coming on to my thumb but very carefully I don't really recommend that certainly at the beginning now these edges now I have to carve the bowl from 12 o'clock around to there hang on from your perspective that's nine o'clock 12 to nine 12 to three six to three six to nine in the directions I'm only going to use a right hand hook, being right handed, for this one to kind of pivot around this corner. And actually this front of the bowl, okay, you can work down grain from the front to the middle and you get a much smoother finish. And sometimes I'll use a knife with a more open curve to sweep right through that and get a super smooth front half on the bowl. And I'm getting pretty much as thin as I want to go now. Oh, talking and um, carving. So that side I can pull through. Same way as when I was working the rim there. I mean, you can hold it up here and get in like this. It's just a bit fiddly. I find it a bit fiddly. Now I've got to clear it, or I can clear that out across where I've got them fluffies. And then I'm going to work in around here. So that corner, I have to present the knife this way. So I can work that around here. Clear it across again, and that corner is easy, it's just a pivot. So just smooth that out. I've got this is always the most awkward corner for a right hander somehow. To work very carefully there just to clear it. So that corners on um, spoon shaped things it's kind of weird, but there you are. Face, edge. Alright, now I'm faffing, I didn't really need to do that. So you might come back when it's drier and just tweak stuff in the bowl. You probably get a cleaner cut. But there, you can probably see that. Um, I'll pivot it. And actually, I can see the sun through that. It's got a bit of a thin spot there. But um, it'll be all right. And you might want to try it at this point. It's a little bit thicker towards the tip, but I've got some tweaks to do with that. Hardly. I mean, um, ideally, spoons get slightly bit thinner towards the front edge. Um, and that way they pop out of your mouth really sweet. 
wiped my nose again, didn't I? Terrible. Right. So now, <coughs> um, what am I going to do? I mean, now we're kind of at a point where we might leave it. Um, you might choose to leave it at this point and come back to it for finishing cuts after a day or so when it's dried. But for the purposes of a video, I shall continue. I'm going to strip the bark. Don't want that bit of bark. Um, okay, I'm going to work the handle a bit more. And a bit thinner. And a little more rounded. I don't like sharp edges here. They can look quite cool, sharp edges on this little section here. Mm. But actually they can be a bit uncomfortable when you're holding. So I kind of think that, uh, that little section. And you have to fiddle around, feel in the grain now. Um, this little section kind of is best sort of rounded. Um, so, chest lever again, cut across that end grain. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that sort of a shape. I'm not gonna do a finial on this one. I take too, too much backing. I'll do that in a separate bit. Um, that's kind of all right, but it's because uh, I've left it getting thicker again here. At the moment, I'm quite liking spoons that kick up. Oh, sorry, taking a lot of wood there. That kick up towards the end here, and you make a little space. For your finger to sit. That little kick back there. Top tip. Right. There you go. That feels like my that little kick back I've made there sits on my finger. And that's working real nice. So let's just look at shaping this neck a bit better. Now I've got the curve, nice even curve from the hook knife. Visually, then I can I can tie the neck, the neck handle transition in with those curves. I'm just going to pull that in a tiny bit tighter through there. Hope you're getting some of these background noises. We've got um, I don't know, a blackbird or something up there. That's no, not a blackbird. I'm not very good on bird noises. I don't know why. It's the same as not being able to hear, hear um, musical notes very well or be able to sing. I can't recognise the birds. Doing it visually. That's probably some small bird. Okay. So this isn't too scruffy. So I'm very quickly going to run through bevels. Um, So I might just do a tiny, tiny tweak to the rim, just to put a tiny bit of rim back on. Because when I worked it with the hook knife there, I was working right off the edge. Um, I'll put some bevels on over here so that top of that spoon is not so flat. And all the time when we're carving, you see I keep going back. What I'm doing is feeling, pushing the knife flat on the surface that I'm carving and sliding it along again until the edge engages. And that way I can continue a surface. Sometimes you get it all in one go like that, uh, which is best, but if you have to, if it pops out, then you can just put a little bit of shape on there. 
and we're going to do a little detail on the neck here. So I'm going to thin down, I'll take the sharp corner off that edge, up around about here, and maybe blend it with that facet that was coming down. Didn't do that very well. Can take that in there. Does that that way. You know, all the time when I pop out or when the knife pops off the cut, I, I go back and come sliding along that surface I've made. Right. So work out how I'm doing this transition. There we are. Plenty of depth there. Okay. So that visually makes the neck look a little bit thinner because it's thinned on top um, and as you go thin here you've got to keep some depth there and I'm not fantastically deep there so I'm not going to go fantastically thin there um, just going to get a little shaping on the end of the handle here just like that okay then We've got a sharp edge all around there, which can be very liable to chip. And again, this is a bit easier when the spoon's dry, but I can put a tiny bevel on around there. you notice I'm moving the spoon a lot past the knife when I'm doing these. I'm just trying to find that edge, feel, and if I shut up talking, actually hold my breath, I'll probably do it better. It's one of those times you need a real steady hand, that one. Just tidy that up. And I can come back and fiddle a little bit more with this later on, but that. Sorry, there's a little lump there. That'll be a usable eating spoon. It's not my mostest elegant ever. Um, 